It's sort of online time. Hello, welcome to another figure view. Today we're going to have a look at the Figma number 543. It's Alice Synthesis 30, one of the main characters from Sword Art Online. And originally I wasn't going to get this figure because I don't really have much connection to the series and whatnot, but this one was heavily requested by you guys. And since I do like the design and I got it pre owned on Ami Ami, which is probably why there's like a dent over there. At a little bit of a reduced price, I decided to pick her up. So, I usually refer to this character when I looked at it as Gold Saber, because that's kind of like the vibe you're getting from it. Very similar to the design, has a lot of gold. And if you know me, I like me some gold, because dumb people like me like shiny things. So, let's have a look at the figure. Fairly hard to pose this one without the base, but it does somewhat work. Just don't expect any uh, heavy action poses. She stands about 14 centimeters to the top of the hat, which means we are going up to uh, a little shy of what is this, five point, almost 5.5 inches to the top size comparisons. Here's Jolter, Saber, aka King Offer, Saber Lily, the SH Figart Son Goku, Naka Michelangelo, and Darkseid. Overall look and detail, starting off with the face sculpt. I really love the distinct design you have with all the Sword Art Online characters. Looks a little bit cold, but you have some nice blue in there. Also a little bit of white in the headdress. Paint on there is surprisingly clean. Usually we have bleeding and whatnot in these kind of situations. You have these two strains of hair which go down, which are soft plastic. And then in the back you have the big braid, which I have a tiny complaint about. It's super loose because the break, there you go. I don't even have to say any much more. I just need to touch it over there. And the peg on it is just a little too short. But it likes to disconnect quite a bit. It's a bit annoying uh, if you're playing around trying to pose and whatnot. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Then you have the gold armor, which has a nice metallic with some more blue detail in there. I have the cross on the chest area and the small blue dots on the side. I don't really like how these little flaps over here swing out to the side. I don't know, I would have preferred them just kind of hanging down. Maybe that's the design of the character, but uh, it just looks like more for action poses. We move down to the gauntlets, have some more gold on there. It's a classic kind of knight warrior style, which uh, I mean it looks good in general. And move down to the entire dress part. I have to cross once again. I guess it's some kind of symbol of a clan or a group. Also have the hole in the back for the butt. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually for the base, but she does have a an actual butt hole because it's a uh, yeah. That's pretty much the right height. I'm an adult. I make adult content. So then we move down to the blue and the white, which is the only time where I can only tell there's some small slips of the uh, paint job. Um, and that's only obviously if you're going in deeply but that's quality control that obviously is not going to be on everyone and to be fair that's kind of like the only part i found where the paint doesn't completely line up but since she has the big dress and let's see what's under the dress because it's ponsu time actually does have ponsu at first i was surprised i thought she would just wear pants under there but no white stockings and a nice clean white ponsu with some more gold shoes well, shoes, again, more armor plates on the knees and shoes. And something I haven't really addressed yet, but I want to zoom out to give the full look at the cape. It's a very thin material, and you do have a wire, so you can pose it. But once again, the wire feels so incredibly thin, and the, the point I'm trying to get at is... It looks good, and I love that it's cloth. I always prefer cloth over plastic, especially since you can pose it in the way you want to. But since everything is so thin, I'm really worried it's going to rip, it's going to tear, we're going to play Doom. But anyway, uh, the wire is so thin, I, I hope it doesn't break. And the same goes for the cape. Overall, right now it's still all fine and dandy, but I would handle especially the cape with very much care. Now, having a look at the articulation, obviously with this busy design. How well did they fare? I feel like uh, there's some good stuff over here. So first and foremost, the hat moves back and forth decently enough, goes side to side, and it would go all the way around, but you really have to be careful with the big braid, which is on another ball hinge, so you can bring that up and goes down, and also can be swiveled. 
and then the lower half also can be swiveled, but we already talked about that. Can swivel the ribbon around and the hair, but uh, it's just gonna pop off pretty much immediately. Then for the shoulder articulation, we're having more butterfly joints. And I really like the engineering on here because it looks so super duper clean. It still doesn't have the greatest range because of the shoulder pads and whatnot clashing with the armor in the front. But the part about it that I like so much is that you have this entire piece just covering up the butterfly joint. So you don't even see it. It does just leave a tiny, tiny gap. And you do get just that a little bit more articulation out of it. Then for this kind of shoulder piece, can also wiggle that one around. It is connected via a very small ball in the back, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really do that much. Just a little bit of rig room. It gets out of the way quite enough. And by the way, I kind of forgot to mention something. The entire cape seems to be connected in the front part of the shoulder pad. So if you want to take that off, I think it would be possible, but just be careful with that because yeah, it's kind of like stuck in the front over there. Back to the articulation though, you can move the entire shoulder up and you can also rotate it because you have the ball hinge that goes into another ball, so you can shift that also back and forth. Let me try and get a, a good forward movement for that. That's as much as you get. For some sword poses, you can also swivel at the ball hinge and the ball in the socket, obviously. Then you have another ball hinge in the elbow, goes up and down, and then the ball hinge in the fist area so you can bring that up down and can also be swiveled around obviously a little bit clashing with the front piece of the arm over here which is soft plastic so it does work can also have a little bit of swiveling in the elbow joint then for the entire armor piece which once again looks pretty seamless as the hair falls down again but you have i think just a ball joint in the uh, torso area so you can get some poses out of it does swivel around and then for the lower hip part you can rotate that under there and bring that around also side to side but let me get actually to the dress real quick this one is a little bit too big i feel like i often say like well you have like gaps and whatnot you will never have a gap on this one but also as a result you can see there's like the ball hinges up there but I tried it around and barely got anything out of it. I mostly have a swivel and a little bit of back and forth because you don't have any room up there. If you would have made that part soft plastic, it would have worked. But as it is, the entire rope, the entire dress is articulated, but it's pretty much a brick. Also, the front part is just soft plastic, doesn't move around. So let's try out the Mlax. Yeah, uh, since this big fat lump of plastic in the front blocks it you're not really gonna get out of with the legs of the entire dress area but the legs you know standard stuff you have the ball so you can rotate it on there you have a, a swivel on the uh, stocking no you don't but you don't really need that and then you have the knee joint goes i mean it would go up a lot more because they hollowed it out a little bit over there Be because of this entire big dress you're not gonna get that far of it and also, the uh, ball hinges on the feet are incredibly loose. That's a little bit of a complaint on that. And uh, moves fairly nicely round, though. Also tilt side to side. And you can rotate the ball on the top part. And finally, you also got a toe hinge. For your accessories, we have a bunch of more gold stuff, which you know I'm a big fan of. Let me turn on this extra lighting, by the way. So we have the sword uh, with the scabbard, the sheathed version, which just has a hole in the back. I mean, I just I love all the detail in there, the small green and the white and whatnot. And it's super duper clean and it's so shiny. Ah, I love it. But anyway, this goes into the back. We have a pack on the side over here. You just get that on there. I'm not gonna do it right now, but there's the pack. Get that on there, and if you wanna have her wield the weapon, you just kinda pull the sword out of the scabbard. Well, the part of the sword, because here is your actual sword. It's the same piece, obviously, but this one is to display for combat, and also you can take it apart. You have the lower half. Just take this off to slide it into the hand, but you also take off the blade. Wait, no. Actually, I messed this up. I was looking at the other part. We have this 
energy effect where I guess her sword, her sword turns into like these golden particles. Like there's a bunch of tiny crosses in there. Looks really cool. And yeah, once you actually use this part for it and just slide it in here. And there you go. You have your cross sword or whatever you want to call that. Then we also have the standards, the Figma base included with every Figma ever. Same goes for the back. Let me just get that out of the way. And then we have some hands. You have some... Um, holding hands, those are like for the scabbard, and then for the sword, and then open posing hands, and then you also have a different hairpiece with an eye patch or an eye band or, uh, you know, one eye covered. And finally, we have two more faces, one kind of happy, content face and an angry, yelling battle face. And there you go. Final thoughts for SAO Alice. I like this design, and that's one of the reasons why I got around and picked it up after all, also because you guys asked multiple times and I was just like, sure, why the hell not, looks great. And I still stand by that. I love the gold, it's a very nice metallic, it's very shiny, and then the blue and the white, everything is applied very nicely and it looks clean overall. The negatives, uh, I'm not really sure about the cape, especially since the nature of it is so thin. And the figure is kind of a brick once you get to the lower half with the big dress. Which, you know, we had previous figures like that. And sometimes they find a, a workaround and sometimes they don't. I feel like it's a little bit too big. If they just would have cut off a little bit in the back, it would have been... Would have worked better and would have still looked great. And also the constantly disconnecting piece of hair in the back. Obviously not the worst part, but since you're trying to play around with it, trying to put it in a post that's just gonna constantly fall off and it's kind of annoying other than that I feel like you have a bunch of cool accessories I actually love the energy pop because that's kind of not common that the thing that does that and you have like the big butterfly joint so they once again tried to do a little bit extra try to add some articulation to it and I applaud them for that so uh, I will recommend this figure I think it looks great it works great it act, uh, articulates well and you have a bunch of cool gold accessories <laughs> that's gonna do it guys as usual thank you very much for watching don't forget if you enjoyed this review hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure views card game stuff and whatever alice synthesis 30 wants